Affinity Photo comes with a powerful mixer brush tool. You can use it to create all kinds of interesting designs. I've got this picture of London. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to apply the mixer brush. So where is it? Mixer brush in Affinity Photo is this. Just select that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go with 128. And also I'm going to go with this one, Impressionist Oil. And you can select any of the brushes. So just select them and then set the width. And also what you can do is set the strength. And I'm going to go with about 43. And there is a reason for that. I'm just going to show you. If I apply it now, just, just apply. You can see the effect of the brush stroke. It creates a sort of scattering effect, sort of rain-like effect very quickly. Now, if I undo that, and I'm just going to push the strength up. So let's just push the strength up and now apply it again. And you can see what happens. I don't want that. I don't want it to use the color. So just set it down to about 40, 43. I found it seems to be a good value. So something like that, 38. And then apply it. And then you'll see what happens. It actually just uses the image. And you can create all kinds of lovely sort of paint effects very quickly in Affinity Photo. So let's just go with a more basic brush. And I'm just going to select the ones here and oils. But you could use anything else. So just select this one, say. Broken bristle oil glazing. And you can double click and you've got all these options. Now I'm just going to tweak it slightly. I'm going to change something like the size, maybe reduce it down. Dynamics, you can manipulate the size jitter. So you can see it varies slightly there. And you can also put scatter there and then close. Now let's apply it this time. And I'm going to apply it around obviously Big Ben there or Victoria Tower, isn't it? And you can see then as you do it, you can create a very interesting, very quick paint effect. Again, just maybe around them, you can just quickly do that, and you can just scatter it like that. And of course, you apply it with a very small brush, it obviously takes a little bit, and I'm using an art pad and pen. You can do it with a mouse, I'll just use a mouse instead. You can see exactly the same sort of thing, just prefer it, just easier with an art pad and pen. But you can, of course, go up here and just say, oh, let's just increase the width, and I'm just going to make it a bit bigger, say 250, and then you can then apply it again, and you can see then. You can apply it very quickly and virtually wipes out the image completely in some ways. And you can, of course, do it in particular directions. So you can sort of, don't have to do it always in the same direction. Or just subtle like that. You can just around it, you can virtually obliterate people, virtually gone from that image. It's a great way of removing people as well from an image. But you can apply all kinds of different ones. So what you can do, let's just select something like this. And then reduce the size. And I'm just going to apply it up and down. And what you do, it creates a lovely sort of weird sort of up and down effect. And you can, of course, do it maybe 150 times, whatever. You can see if you just do it very, you can hear me obviously applying my art pad and pen. So you can create a very abstract up vertical design like that. Maybe go the other way as well. You can always go this direction. So you can just apply all kinds of sort of distorted effects or brush strokes or imagery very quickly using all kinds of brushes. But again, any point you can undo, get there. And again, if you want, just turn around and think, you know what, I want the width to be slightly greater and then apply it this time. Now you can see sometimes you can add a brush dab. It like applies it straight away. But after that, the initial thing, the colors, it doesn't seem to have any real particular impact. And then you can just apply it. You can still see your brush apply to that bus there, or see over there with the House of Parliament, and you can create that sort of effect. Well, one thing with this I always find that's slightly annoying is that there's no option for blend modes. And the blend modes don't seem to work as well. If you go in here, and you double click, there's an option here. If you go general, you've got blend mode, normal. And if you set it to screen, you'd think, well, you know, now when I apply it, the screen effect, it would be, but it's no different whether you set it or not. And there's quite a few settings as well, I've found when I'm using this tool, that they just seem to be ignored, which is a pity. I always think that maybe Affinity Photo, they should sort of like disable them at that point. So you can look and think, well, actually, that's not going to have any effect. But they don't seem to do that option. So sometimes you just have to, from bitter experience of doing it, thinking, well, that's strange. But there is a way around that, of course. There's always a way around generally. And this is the way I use. Go to Layer and then just duplicate. So layer and duplicate. And then you can go over here 
and grunge oil. And then you can apply it then. So now apply it and you can see as I apply that, you can see I'm great. Obviously, I'm this time a diagonal effect very quickly on this image. But of course, I'm applying this to the duplicate. The original is still there. So if I just keep doing this, obviously, again, you can vary the like, You can just do all kinds of different designs in your brush strokes. You don't have to do it sort of vertically, diagonally. But I just like to create a nice uniform effect like that. Well, then you can go over here to layers. Got the background there. You can always go here and say light and screen. And you can create some very interesting designs simply by going through these just by blending and maybe difference or exclusion and so on. So you can create that and then of course you can still continue to apply it and modify that layer. So that's a great way to do it. You can also, I'm just going to delete that layer now. What you can also do is apply the brush stroke as a symmetrical effect and you can see symmetry here. So I'm just going to quickly click here and I'm going to set it to five. I always like to put lock once I've decided where I'm going to put it. Now I'm just going to quickly clean this brush. I just click clean and now you shouldn't get that black appear in there. Slightly annoys me actually every time. I mean, it's hardly noticeable, but it's just slightly bugs when I see it. I think, oh. But then if you apply it and then you get this, this sort of effect, you're applying it from that central effect, you just push outwards and it's applied to all of the areas. Now, it's not the same image being applied on this thing. So this still ends up, you can still see that London bus there. You can still sort of see the House of Parliament there, but it's all coming out from that central. And again, you can see you've got the black there as well. It's still there slightly, even, yeah, just slightly, but it's very subtle. It's just a little blob and it's gone. But you can undo and then you can, of course, move it so you don't have to have that. So you, I've got it locked. I always like locked. So locked, turn that off, and then you can move it. So you just reposition. You might want to do it around, say, the House of Parliament or something over there. And, well, let's just do it. So. Symmetry and lock. So again, you can then apply it like that. And you can see now the effect, obviously over in that corner. And you can, of course, create all kinds of variations, maybe add some like curves into your design. You don't have to do it in straight line or anything like that. Or maybe do sort of random sort of squiggles like that. Undo and just maybe do it very subtly. You don't have to apply it to completely obliterate the image, I don't think. And then you can always, again, lock, unlock it. And also, you can always turn it off at any point. And you can undo it as well. And you can also create literally millions of other effects simply by using these effects here and spreading things out, maybe creating a scatter effect. That does work. So this one is a good one example. You can see it's pretty scattered before. So I'm just going to go to another one. So let's just go to this one. Let's just choose this one. Dynamics, go here. And you can see the scatter there is 2% and 12%, obviously very, very low. But you can then increase it, scatter, and you can see the result. Now, some obviously some brushes, this will have an effect, and you can modify the, the texture here. And also sub brushes as well. You can go and edit that. You can modify it in all, and you can see that sub brush there. So double click, and you can reduce that down. You can see then you get that sort of effect. It's a whole range of different brushes you can create just by manipulating sub brushes as well as of course the main brush well with that design now i can just apply it let's just apply it just try it out and you can see you get this lovely scattering effect that creates again a lovely sort of different painterly effect and now you can apply it just around a particular place you don't have to apply it all over the entire image it's one thing that with these things it's like just put that down let's put it, reduce it down and here i can decide you know what i just want this part you just do here. That's the great thing about brushes. They're, they're local. So you can just apply it to that and leave all the other part completely untouched. And you can apply different styles maybe to different parts. You might decide, you know, want this to be sort of upright, that sort of direct, or maybe go the other way and so on. So it's all sort of wavy and all kinds of different things to create interesting effects. But you've still got the other people here in the image, everything else, the bus, people walking across the bridge, all still totally untouched. And of course, then you can go and select a different brush. Let's just move this one. And there are lots and lots and lots of brushes. So engraving, and you've got this one. And again, 
just apply it. And you now see this lovely scratchy sort of effect. I think that's a, always a very nice one to use as well. And again, you can manipulate the width, you can manipulate the strength, you can also manipulate if you load and clean the brush, auto clean brush, and so on. There's a whole range of options you can do with this paint mixer brush. I think it's a really powerful tool of Affinity Photo. And of course, you can always combine it with other effects as well. Though, in this case, let's just do it. So let's just undo those. Got that. Again, I would suggest layer and duplicate. So you do that. Apply the effect. Let's just increase the size. It's really big. Make it much more dramatic and very rapid. And you can see then, as I apply it like that, apply it all the way across. You still can just... A, looks like rain or something it's very smeared across your lens there very roughness to the image but again it's a duplicate so with this you can always go here and change the blend mode let's just go through and find one that looks really good and maybe go with all right let's just go for one of them negation no average luminosity let's just go for normal <laughs> always go through and decide hmm, maybe not right well once you've got this what you can do you can always just distort it. Now there's a load of filters to distort it. So filters, distort, and there's a load of ones here. Shear is a great one. I really like shear, but deform. Let's just go for deform. Now there's a problem with this. I've straight away done deform. And if you're using the brushes, mix a brush, it's a brush and you can add these bins. Sometimes you'll find that you can't select this. Not always happens, but I have found sometimes with the brushes, it does lock it. So you might want to, go first to the move tool and then use deform and you can see then you can distort this lovely smeared effect obviously you're distorting the actual people as well and the bus but you can create a lovely sort of weird and wonderful smearing effect all different angles as well because that's the one thing that the smearing brush does not do it doesn't it's got no algorithms to apply different sorts of wavy i'd love to see those sort of features in there but it doesn't have it and then Click apply but of course background as duplication you can go here to layers and that means you can always run through and just use this again you can run through and see you know what that looks so much nicer maybe dark multiply gives a sort of very weird sort of very late in the day effect and with also very odd imagery for the clouds and the, everything pulled all over the place well that is a run through this Really powerful tool. I really suggest checking out Paint Mixer Brush Tool. Really great. And of course, great also combined with all these other options here. I find it much nicer than the Smudge Tool, which I find very odd. Smudge Brush is one of the things when I was doing experimentation with this tool. The Mixer, I find so much nicer than using the Smudge Brush Tool. Before finishing the video, I also want to show you, you can fade the brush effect, but it works in a really weird way. So again, here, I've got the mixer brush or paint mixer brush. So I've got that and I'm just going to apply a brush stroke. Let's just apply it. And it could be any brush stroke, so I'm just going to apply it to this background layer. So apply it like that. Again, there's no option for a blending mode which I find slightly odd. I do not know why they couldn't have added that feature in, but still, we haven't got that, so apply that. As mentioned before, you could create duplicate layers and then use blends between that, but what you can also do is go to layer and fade paint mixer. Now this has got very weird behavior, and I hadn't noticed it before, but fade paint mixer brush, and you can see now, you can go through the blend mode, let's just go through, let's just set all these things. You can see you can do opacity there, and that sort of effect, which is fine. You can obviously just reduce it down. That's useful. But say you leave it there and you go to dark and say, and I'm just going to, now it's, it's odd the way it works, the fade. I've always found it slightly odd, but still let's go with this and go with all through these. And you can see what's happening. It blends the entire image. It doesn't fade the brush stroke, <laughs> that seems to be very odd to me, I must admit. And when I first I thought, maybe it does that, obviously it probably does that with all the other things. I've just never particularly noticed it so glaringly, but I just thought, hmm, that's very strange, you've got a difference. Now, if I fade that down, it's fade, it hasn't, it's not 
doing that, the bit, only bit of the area that I'm doing now, maybe this has always been the way, but it just seems odd to me that, that you would have the entire thing being changed. You'd think that just that bit would be modified. Still, that's the way it seems to work. And you can then obviously click apply and then you've got that. But it's something that, again, not certain why the paint mixer brush doesn't have a feature that you can apply it. And also there's other things that you think would be really nice if you could manipulate the colours as well, the hue and the saturation. If you go over here and you apply it, say I click here, you've got hue jitter here, saturation jitter and luminosity jitter. If I apply that, now if I apply it, and you can see I can apply like that. Again, one of those options that has absolutely no effect. What would be nice would be the result of the, the actual paint mixer being applied, but using that combination of saturation and luminosity, just tweaking the values. It just would seem to make sense to me that it would use that, but it doesn't do that. So certainly be aware about that in Affinity Photo, that there are some things that just seem slightly odd in this paint mixer brush. Any comments, any questions, always great to hear from you. Please put some comments about whether you like sort of discussion about this paint mixer or any of the other tools. Would you like me to go through and explore some of the features and options of some of the other tools? There's a lot of great tools in Affinity Photo. I will not probably go through the cat tool. The cat tool is probably not really needed in any way. However, please subscribe if you've not subscribed before, obviously, and also a like or dislike is always great to know as well. Bye.